Okay, let's take a quick look at creating bearing distance lines, labeling the bearing distance and lines curves, creating a line and curve table, and using Sybil 3D tools. So I'll go to the home page and start with the line command here. Go down to create line by bearing. And this is used often for people who do the meets and bounds surveys with plats, property descriptions, easements, or, or uh, deeds and things of that nature, which if, if you'll start either at a coordinate you may have or you can just pop a point out here, it actually shows you here which quadrants you are. Here's a quadrant one, here's quadrant two, here's quadrant three, here's quadrant four. So you know which quadrants you're going to actually enter in because that's the first thing it asks you to do is enter a quadrant. So if you have a line that's northeast 45 degrees, 45 minutes, 45 seconds, then we know that that's northeast. So we hit 1, enter, and then when you put in your degrees, minutes, and seconds from any of these documents that you have, when you're using this command, you do not convert them you don't have to know anything. All you need to do is put in the degrees first with the decimal after that and then the minutes and the seconds in number form just like it shows on the document. Don't try to convert anything. If it says north 45 degrees, so I'll put 45 in a dot. 45 minutes, I'm going to put 45. It says 45 seconds, I'm going to put 45. Enter. Next thing it's going to ask me is distance. So I'll say it's 200 feet. So there's my first line. And let's say the second one is in southeast 30, 30 degrees, 30 minutes, 30 seconds. So let's put that in. Southeast is going to be the second quadrant. And you're going to put in 30. Degrees. Point. 30 minutes, 30 seconds. Enter. And let's say this one's 200 feet. And you just kind of continue on around. Uh, if you come to curves, I, hopefully you have a core bearing the distance. And I usually just put those lines in first and come back and put my curves in later. Uh, most most deeds go that way. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to figure your curve as you go along there. But I, you know, I just do the core bearing the distance and come back. So we'll do another one. This is a third quadrant. So we'll say south. Uh, west, which is third quadrant, so we're going to enter three, and let's say this one's 20 degrees, so put 20 point 20 minutes, 20 and 20 seconds, 20, just as it says. Don't have to convert anything, hit enter, and uh, let's say this one's 125 feet. Okay, so that you just keep on going till you get back to the beginning or however far that you have labeled. So once you get that done, we want to go and so you want to go to annotate, add labels. Go to partial single segment or feature line. Either one of these will work. So we'll just use the partial. If you've got a whole, one whole partial, it's a different uh, video altogether. So go single segment and you click on the line and it should label. Now, uh, I don't want horizontal. That's not right. You know, I did that on purpose, so in order to change that, we'll click on it, hit the right button, and then go to Edit Label Style here. We see that slope. We don't want slope. We want bearing over distance. That sounds good. And that's what we want right there. Okay. Now one thing you'll notice if you go back to add the labels and you go back there and you say, okay, I'm going to do that again. It comes back again. So I don't want to have that come back again. Well, how do you fix that? Well, the way I fix it, the way, but this way I go back over to add labels and up the top here, there's a little tag. I hit the tag. I'm not really adding a label necessarily, but I'm going to go ahead and do this one time and I'm going to go and select the um, type of item that I'm labeling this line and curve and see it says slope only. We don't want that. We want the bearing or distance. And we'll hit go ahead and hit add and it's going to say you want to go ahead and add one over here. Fine, we'll do it one time. 
close that out and now you'll notice that uh, it works defaulted so you don't have to go back and change that every time so that that shows you how to do the labels um, if you got a curve in there we'll just do a fill it the heck of it and do a radius of 25 put that in there same thing you go over here and add single segment it'll put your curve in there and you can pull that out and leader so you can actually see it and it's not all bungled up in there so that's another issue that we have here that I want to go over really quick is those don't look the same height you pull that out and you notice when you have a pull out leader it doesn't look right so you gotta fix that so the way you fix that we'll, we'll take a look at the this when we get label style hit that and it's 15 okay let's look at this one style on that one and it says it's 15 but that actual height of the the tape what they're calling the table tag is 10.10 so really that is a better scale so really all I have to do is go back and change these to 0 0.10 and you can change these as necessary this is the way you do it 0 0.10 and click OK click OK and now you notice how that matches so everything matches and once you change one table um, I mean one um, style remember it changes everything across the board so be careful with that if you want it all change at one time it's a good thing so now that we went through labeling some of these items let's actually go down and create some more on a um, little plot I already have here really quick so we're going to go add label so we can create a table so I can again go with partials and we can go to single settings uh, and click all these lines and I had some curves in here so just in case somebody you know how would I set a curve in there I'll just go with that real quick as well so I'm going to go back to home here and go to your curve command and I've got um, back to here and take a look at that's the correct one because you want to go from the let's go from the end to here to the end of there and it should be 25 there we go it's just kind of a tricky way of doing it but you'll have to figure that out by using the curve commands and we can do that again here and we know it's going that direction should be able to put 25 foot and do the same here 25 foot well I messed that one up somehow these little grips here are not right it seems like you got to pull it to where it's make sure it's inside there so that's a little bit on the curves I didn't mean to put in there but I did it anyway um, so you got your curves in there and you got your line so when you do the same thing go back over here to annotate add partial single and then we'll put curve there and curve there and curve there because we got to set this up to where we have tables. I'm going to pull these out so I can see them. Okay, so now we want to create a table on all this because you got a sheet that has tons of these and you don't have enough room. you got to create tables on it. So we want to go over here to tables, add tables, and the thing I want to go over first though is once you get into your tables you realize well hey I might have to go back and relabel rename the or renumber these and it, there's not a setting up here really for that where's it at well what I've found is under settings 
click on your drawing, hit your right button, and right there is kind of where it's hidden down there. Why it's down there, I don't know. But see how that tells you the table creation. So if you're going to have to renumber these things, they're all starting at one right now. But you'll get into a situation where you get down to 20 or 30 and it keeps on going. You'll say, wait a minute, I want to start back at one. So how do you do that? Well, here's a little secret guy hiding over here that you fix that with under settings and right button on your drawings on that so then we just go to add table and we're going to do a lines and curve we'll start with the lines and we'll just come over here when you get your table creation and you just want to select them look at everything length and direction that's all I've got here's your widths and all that you can change all that once you get done I wouldn't worry about that right now so I'm just going to grab all my lines if I want to start with one there it'll go around like that enter yes I do want to convert all of these to label styles so it'll create a tag in those so hit OK hit OK and now what it's done is it's labeled those so well I escaped it why did I do that for I don't know why did you do that so let's do that again uh, line on tables, select, hit that, hit that, hit that, enter, convert, click OK. Now we're going to put that over here and there, there we go. So you have line one and two. And starting from the bottom, so, and those are kind of not in order either. Two, three, four, and L ones at the bottom. You know, just to look at redoing these to in order. If you find that that happens, then go down here to the table properties, and then hit the actual table style, and click a sort data right there. That's how I fix that. So we have the partial table, line table. So let's do the curb same way I'm going to go over here and add a curve table and select three curves I have convert those and hit OK let's see if it puts these in order yeah those are in order then after I do that um, if, if, if you had a lot of these let's say you had 20 or 30 and you don't want them to go all the way down your drawing because they're going to be too far of a table it's going to be too long when you go into your table properties down here you can do the maximum rolls here if you put like 10 on that uh, like I think if we put one I can try that I don't know if it'll mess up see I put one and it split them all out that's how you do that if you want to create multiple tables that are shortened then you put your you know, you'll do that by your uh, maximum rows per table. And that's about it. That's quite a bit on, on this information. Hope you got a good deal out of that. Over and out.